As Aaron mentioned, it's award season, and one of the major ones, the ones, one of the few ones outside of the Oscars that I actually pay pay very close attention to, is the SAG Awards. That's the Screen Actors Guild, and they put out their announcement of their nominees this morning. The full list of the the of the SAG nominees came out this morning. So let's start going. We're not going to pay much attention to the television ones. We'll touch on the television ones, but I'm mainly interested in, in the movie ones. And with, there is one, there's a few little surprises. There's one massive surprise, massive surprise. All right, let's go through this here. So we're looking at the SAG award nominations and here we go. Start, start off. And this is where the big one starts coming right away, guys. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role. Christian Bale, Ford v. Ferrari. Little surprise that he got it. I, I mean, I have no problem with that. I thought he was great in it. Leonardo DiCaprio, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He was fabulous in that mm-hmm, movie. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not out of my mind in love with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I like the movie, but I didn't love. But the perf- him his and Brad performance Pitt, was phenomenal. Crazy good. Adam Driver in Marriage Story. No surprise, especially after watching it. Like no surprise. Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. No surprise. This one I'm shocked. Taron Egerton in Rocket Man. Yeah. Now I'll I'll I tell was, you why I'm surprised. shocked. I like Taron Egerton in Rocket Man very much. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I thought he was very, very good in Rocket Man. But it's not that Taron's name is there. It's whose name isn't there yeah. while Taron Egerton's is. And that is Robert De Niro in Irishman. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that I am personally aghast. No, no. But everything we have seen and heard as far as the buzz goes, was not just that De Niro is one of the the leading guys. He's kind of a de facto favorite Mm -hmm. going into Oscars. He's not the favorite to ultimately win, but one of the names in the conversation to not just be nominated, but to win. Right. And as we see on the second, everybody else in in Irishman got nominated, and Robert De Niro did not. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is the huge surprise of all the nominations. Again, I this is not meant as a put down on Taron Egerton at all. No, I thought he did he was a wonderful performance. Very good wonderful performance in Rocket Man. Very good in Rocket Man. Mm-hmm. Better than Robert De Niro in Irishman. That's his movie. Yeah, I, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of stunned by this. So, and this is, by the way, this isn't some weird country club group. These are the actors. Mm-hmm. This is the Screen Actors Guild members who voted for this. So I don't know, Aaron. As a SAG member yourself, I take full responsibility but for I the mean, I, slight. You, were you as shocked by this as me? Or I was. I it? actually, uh, I was, I was awake at five o'clock this morning, and I saw an alert on my phone: the SAG Award nominations are coming out in one hour. And I was like, "Oh my god!" I set my alarm for six o'clock so I would make sure to wake up. Um, and yeah, I was I was really surprised at that, especially um, given that we haven't heard a lot of Oscar buzz recently for Taron Egerton. Obviously, when Rocket Man first came out, everybody, you know, as soon as a movie comes out, people go, "Oh my gosh, they're going to be nominated for." An-. We've heard that. We heard about Eddie Murphy for. Um, um, oh gosh, uh, remind me, Eddie Murphy. Um, uh, Dolomite. Dolomite. My name is Dolomite. There was buzz for that for him. Um, Adam Sandler. There was buzz for him and Un- Uncut Gems. You That's know, th- another surprise that he's not in there. I agree. Because he won the National Board of Review for Best Actor and didn't get nominated at the SAGs. Yeah, and so I wonder if it is one of those situations like we talked about with the um, Mr. Rogers documentary, where everybody assumes that it's going to be nominated, and so nobody nominates it. I don't know. I wasn't on the nominating committee this year, so I had nothing to do with. It. It, but it, it it was it's a very obvious slight. But I think that if anything, I don't think that's an indication that he won't get closer to Oscar. I think it's an indication that people are going to be much more conscious to make sure that they are nominating him for an Oscar and not just assuming that you know he'll win. It's it's interesting because this was the funny thing. It reminds me of the situation back when Argo was out. Mm. And the Directors Guild of America, the DGA, yes. awarded Ben Affleck Best Director of the Year. Who's on the director's branch of the Academy? Members of the DGA. Mm-hmm. So he wins the Directors Guild of America Best Director of the Year, but he doesn't, doesn't get, nominated get nominated for an Academy Award when his movie wins Best Picture. And yeah. that's the funny thing. It's like, who's in the actor's branch? Of the Academy Award, SAG members. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think you, but I think you might be right. There could be a 
course correction because like, whoa, wait a minute, we didn't actually nominate Robert De Niro. Right. And they might course correct. But anyway, I thought, that, but you brought up a couple of other one, really interesting ones. Uh, Eddie Murphy, which I think is considered an outside chat, but still, but uh, Adam Sandler not getting in the front cut gems. Really interesting. And we could go on all day about this, but let's look at some of the other categories here. Outstanding performance by female in a leading role. Not a lot of big surprises here. Uh, Cynthia uh, Erivo from Harriet. Scarlett Johansson from A Marriage Story. Absolutely well-deserved. Lupita Nyong'o for Us. Thank God, because I've been seeing some other award stuff and I'm not seeing Lupita Nyong'o's mm-hmm. pop-up. And I'm like, what are you smoking? Did you see us? Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Charlize Theron in Bombshell. Get ready to hear that word a lot. Oh, Bombshell. yeah. And Renee Zellweger in Judy. I think the de facto front runner right now is probably Renee Zellweger in there. Is there any names missing there that you're surprised are not there right now? Um, <sighs> No? No. No, no surprises. Nothing's, nothing's like popping in my head like, oh my God, I can't believe. Uh, I, mean, I, I I agree with you, Charlize Theron. I mean, already you can tell they're on the Oscar campaign. You, she's posting a lot on her social media, um, which is a little bit more, you know, definitely more so than she was just even a few months ago. There's just a lot of stuff going on. We're seeing her a lot more and, and you, can, you can see the campaign rolling out. So they're definitely going for an Oscar on that one. Um, I was... It, interestingly enough, um, the number of nominations for Scarlett Johansson, leading actress, supporting actress, best ensemble. So well, I, we got we have got some more c- categories to get to here. Oh, we're still talking about. Oh, it. Yeah, Sorry. we're still so so that was best. Uh, f- uh, feel, not not a ton of surprises. This is a one that is to me no surprises. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a supporting role: Jamie Fox, Jess Mercy, Tom Hanks in A Beautiful mm-hmm. Day in the Neighborhood, Al Pacino for The Irishman, Joe Pesci in The Irishman. So they get nominations, mm-hmm. but Robert De Niro doesn't, and Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Again, sorry, he was not. A supporting actor in that movie. No, he, he was, was every bit of a lead as leader, but still, that that's where they ca- uh, campaigned him. So no surprises there, really, at all. Outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role. Laura Dern, Marriage Story, no surprise there. Scarlett Johansson and Jojo Rabbit, that was a little bit of a surprise. Because, you know, people ask me, because it is my number one favorite mm-hmm. movie of the year. And people said, do you think JoJo's going to get a, a nomination for this? And I said, probably not. I, I don't think Scarlett Johansson will. I just refer to her as JoJo. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think she will, but man, she was really good in it. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised, but pleasantly surprised. More Bombshell. Nicole Kidman from Bombshell, Margot Robbie in Bombshell, and Jennifer Lopez from Hustlers. Good for her. Good for her. I, I, you know what? I really do like that movie. I thought that movie was quite mm-hmm. good. All right. Then we move on to an outstanding performance by a cast. This is the Ensemble Award. This kind of SAG's version of Best Picture. Bombshell, no surprise seeing as it got three acting nominations. Right. The Irishman, even without Robert De Niro being nominated for uh, Jojo Rabbit, which I'm surprised by, but very pleasantly surprised by. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood surprises me. That and I'll surprised get to that in me a second. as well. And then Parasite, no which surprise. Which you're very excited about because you I'm loved it. Very, it's my second favorite film of the year. Here's why Once Upon a Time in Hollywood surprises me. And I actually did a video on this the other day saying, you know, who do I think the front runners for Best Ensemble? And I said, I don't think it'll be once upon a time because traditionally when you look at the sags when they cast when they do their nominations for best ensemble it's usually a film that is more than just one or two primary performers right because in once upon a time in hollywood it's those two and everybody else has very minor to almost mm-hmm. invisible roles one scene here one scene there yeah so i was kind of surprised by that were you i was very surprised by that it doesn't i don't i don't consider that an ensemble film you know as an actor when i think of an ensemble film um i i think of a film where you have like you said more than two characters who are consistently coming together and you're seeing the dynamic of how multiple personalities work together to solve problems to solve conflicts conflict. Yes, it's obviously all in the writing, but additionally, it's those conflicts and the chemistry between multiple people. Who's going to side with who? Who's going to, you know, uh, just all those little, the nuances and the minutia between multiple people in a room adds a different flavor than just a two-hander. So I was a little surprised at that. I mean, if they're going to, if we're talking about the chemistry between Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, yes, absolutely. I'll give them that. But I, I was a little surprised by this one uh I, I won't go through a lot of the television stuff here but we will just touch on this one here which is uh speak, sticking to ensemble outstanding performance by an ensemble in a drama series which is their version of best best drama big little lies the crown game of thrones handmaid's tale stranger things i'm surprised stranger things got in there to be honest really? with you yeah i like stranger things very much i like it very very much but i i gotta say 
I honestly thought the morning show would get a mm. best ensemble uh, not in there. I, I think this is Big Little Eyes Award to lose. I mean, yeah. that whole that's a large group mm-hmm. of, of, of performers. All of them, get, most of them get equal billing time. Most of them get equal screen time. And they're all absolutely fabulous. And they're all big stars. And you don't you you see an actual friendship between these women. You see actually, uh, and and whether they are or they're not off screen, I have no idea. But you really do believe that these women would live in the same town, that they actually would go to lunch together, that they would have this relationship. Yeah. I'm not surprised by Stranger Things though, because I gotta say the chemistry between those kids is incredible. Incredible. I love them. Like I, I, love I, them. I I'm, I'm like I, I wanted to be. I want to be one of those kids. I want. I want that to be my childhood. And I like um, season three. Season three is my favorite season yeah. so far. Mm-hmm. I actually like the last. And, and I see them getting closer and closer as the seasons go on. Yeah. So you really believe that relationship as well. All right. So the last one we'll talk about here is outstanding performance by an ensemble in a comedy series. And I'm obviously have. I'm tickled by this because well, first of all, there's Barry, which I love. Love. Fleabag. The, love. I think the two that are going to be hard to beat here are Fleabag. Bag and the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which mm-hmm. I, I just I love Mars. Uh, the the Komsky method, which is really big. I love that a CBC show, <laughs> the Canadian <laughs> Broadcast Corporation show, Schitt's Creek has been nominated for Best uh, Comedy Ensemble. Shouldn't we be playing your national anthem right now? I feel like we should be standing. <laughs> um, it's great to see a CBC show. And it is well. such a funny show. Um, it is so. If if you guys are not watching Shit's Creek, it's definitely one the to to and and you don't even necessarily need to uh, uh, binge it, which you should you should. But even coming in and watching one episode, you, you'll get it. It's just it's great comedy. By the way, I don't know if we brought this up. There's another comedy. Oh damn! Now I forgot the name of it. Who's it's on it? it's on Hulu. And now I can't remember. I, a bunch of the, the viewers, it's this stupid Canadian show that a bunch of our viewers got me watching. And now I can't remember. Why am I freezing on the Do name you know, of it? Someone who's in it? What's uh, it about? I, nope, nope. You wouldn't recognize a single name of anybody who's in it. But a bunch of people started sending me, uh, a bunch of people started sending me, say, John, you've got to watch this. Okay. And then me and Robert start started pulling up clips on YouTube. And I was falling out of my chair. Well, I, look, I'm sure some of you guys... In um in the uh, there's a 30 second delay right now, but I'm sure some of you guys in the live chat will throw in what the name of that show is that I'm freezing on because I need to know the name of that show because I got to show it to to Aaron later because yeah. oh my god it's just so hilarious ah there it is uh was it Letter Kenny Letter Kenny is the name of it and Letter Kenny it's I don't a know Canadian I'm... show okay. but they show it on Hulu in Canada I got to show you a couple of clips great I can't wait oh my god Th- by the way that's one of the things I love about doing the show is that people recommend things I mean that's how I discovered Letter Kenny from you guys anyway guys main thing here is what do you think about the SAG nominations to me again the big surprise was yeah Adam Sandler not for Uncut Gems and stuff but Robert De Niro not mm-hmm. getting nominated when everybody else in the movie did anyway what do you guys think about that jump down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts all right